Hi, I'm Dave Watts. Welcome to the eighth part of GSA 200, Writing a Feed. In this session, we'll learn what feeds are, the different types of feeds, what problems they can solve, and how to build and troubleshoot a feed. The GSA can usually crawl web content, but what if you have content that's not on a web server, or content that is on a web server that can't be crawled or has additional metadata associated with it? Maybe you have content on a crawlable web server, but metadata about that content is in a database. To get that content into the GSA, you can build a feed client. A feed client is a lightweight program that requests documents and metadata from your content servers using their APIs, builds an XML document that conforms to the GSA feed specification, and sends that XML document to a specific URL pattern and port on the GSA. There are two common feed types. The first is called a metadata and URL feed. This feed builds a list of URLs and provides metadata for each URL. The GSA will crawl the URLs and associate the metadata with those URLs as if it had been in the documents themselves. Many content management systems store metadata in a database. This type of feed will let you provide that metadata to the GSA. Your feed client will read metadata from your content repository, then build an XML file containing the URLs and their respective metadata. That file will then be sent from your feed client using an HTTP POST request to TCP port 19900 or port 19902 for HTTPS to the URL pattern XML feed. The GSA will then process the XML. Any URLs that the GSA didn't already have in its index will be added to the crawl queue. All URLs must match a follow and crawl pattern, just like with any other crawl URLs. The GSA will crawl the URLs and associate the metadata from the feed with those documents. If you want to change the metadata, you will need to rerun your feed. The GSA will schedule URLs to be recrawled, just like other URLs it discovers during a crawl. The second common feed type is a content feed. This feed builds a list of URLs and provides the actual file content for each URL and optionally includes metadata and ACLs as well. The GSA will not crawl the URLs from a content feed. Instead, it will extract and index the content from the feed file. As with a metadata and URL feed, the content feed URLs need to match a follow and crawl pattern even though the GSA isn't actually crawling them. If the content, metadata, or ACLs change, you will need to rerun your feed. Because the GSA isn't crawling the URLs, it doesn't have any way to know that they've changed. Connectors are just a more complex type of feed client. They can build metadata and URL feeds or content feeds. The newest 4.0 version of connectors, currently in beta, work differently from older connectors. They build a metadata and URL feed, but also provide a crawl proxy for the GSA. The URLs in the feed will be requested from the connector instead of the content server. The output of a feed client is an XML document that conforms to the GSA feed specification. The format of this document is similar for both metadata and URL feeds and content feeds. Here's an example of a content feed. The root element is GSA feed. It contains two child elements, header and group. Within the header element, there are two child elements. Data source is the feed name that will appear within the feeds page of the GSA. Feed type will contain one of three possible values, incremental, full, or metadata, dash, and, dash, URL. Content feeds can be either incremental or full. A full feed will tell the GSA to delete any records previously associated with the data source name and index only the records included in the current feed. This is helpful for initial feeds or a complete recrawl. An incremental feed will add or overwrite records previously fed with the same data source name. The second child element is group. 
A single feed can contain one or more groups. Each group can contain one or more records. Each record will specify a URL as an attribute, along with an action attribute of add or delete, and a MIME type attribute that is required only for content feeds, so content can be correctly converted to HTML for indexing. Each record may contain a metadata element, which in turn will contain the metadata fields and values to be associated with that record. In the case of a content feed, it will also contain a content element, which will contain the actual content of the file to be indexed. Content feeds can also mark documents as secure by specifying an authentication method using the auth method attribute. And content feeds can include ACLs. There are two formats for specifying ACLs. This example shows the new format where the record contains an ACL element which can specify permit and deny rules for users and groups. This format can optionally include a namespace which corresponds to a credential group on the GSA. Inheritance is supported. You can see the parent ACL within the group in this example. If you have feeds that use the legacy format, they will still work on your GSA, but new feeds should use the new format. Most content within feeds will either be HTML or binary content from PDFs, Microsoft Office documents, and so on. For HTML content, you will need to wrap that content with a character data block, shown in red on the slide. This excludes its contents from XML parsing. Because XML and HTML share the same meta characters, any HTML included within an XML file needs to be wrapped with this CData block. Binary content, on the other hand, needs to be converted to text to be included in an XML file that will be transmitted over HTTP. The GSA expects binary content to be in Base64 format. This content can optionally be compressed using the ZLive compression algorithm. To submit a feed, you will need to configure the GSA to accept the feed. Any URLs in the feed need to match a follow and crawl pattern. The IP address of the feed client has to be allowed to submit the feed. By default, the GSA won't accept feeds from any external IP address. If you want to use HTTPS, you will need to configure the GSA to prevent plain text access. You can also enable client certificate authentication if you've enabled HTTPS. Most HTTPS clients require the use of valid signed certificates, so you will need to install one on the GSA. Your XML file will need to include the feed type and data source, and those values will also need to be included as form fields along with the file itself. Your file must be encoded using Unicode text format 8-bit. A single XML feed file cannot exceed one gigabyte. You may have to submit multiple content feeds if you have many documents to index. Your feed client must send the XML feed document to the GSA using an HTTP post using the MIME type multipart slash form dash data to one of the two listening ports and the correct URL pattern XML feed. If the feed document was received, the GSA will respond with a single word, success. This simply means that the feed request has been accepted and that the feed document is well formed and valid. You can then go to the feeds page to check the progress of processing your documents. Once the GSA has processed the documents in your feed, you should be able to view them in index diagnostics shortly after that. Metadata and ACLs for a document can also be viewed in index diagnostics. In case your feed submission fails, you might find it useful for your program to save a local copy of the generated XML so that it can be submitted again without recreating it. To delete items from a metadata feed, add the appropriate URL patterns to do not crawl patterns. To delete individual records or groups from a content feed, you can use the action attribute for an individual record with a value of delete. To delete all items from a content feed, you can either delete the feed manually in the GSA feeds page, or you can send an empty feed with feed type set to full.
Content feeds are generally more complicated and larger than metadata and URL feeds. For content feeds, you might want to send multiple feeds with smaller XML documents rather than one large document. The GSA can process as many feeds simultaneously as you like, up to 50, but won't be any faster if it's processing more than about six at the same time. You can use the get backlog count URL to see how many feeds are currently being processed. We haven't listed all the attributes and values that the XML feed specification allows. For example, you may want to specify a page rank for records in a content feed. Normally, the GSA calculates page rank for each document based on the number and quality of links to that document, among other things. Documents from a content feed will have a much lower page rank and will be less relevant as a result. To learn about all the attributes in the XML feed specification, including page rank, read the Feeds Protocol Developer's Guide in the GSA documentation. As mentioned earlier, content can be compressed using the ZLIB compression algorithm, then encoded using Base64. The encoding attribute for compressed content should be set to Base64 compressed instead of Base64 binary. Let's see how a metadata and URL feed works. In this example, I've already indexed several documents that I'm going to use as my corresponding pages. These pages don't have any metadata right now, so if I drill down on one of them, I can see that the document does not contain metadata. And I want to add metadata for all four of these pages. So to do this, I've written a simple program. This program is written in ColdFusion, which is a web programming language. At the very top, I've created a data object to contain my individual records. An array of structures. Structures are simple objects that contain, in this case, three attributes, URL, class, and order. So that's my sample data. Below this, I'm building the actual XML document itself. Now, there are a couple of ways I could go about doing this. This is kind of the simple way of doing it. I literally have my XML document, and then within the body of that XML document, I'm running a loop to generate the individual URLs. They're all in the same directory, so I have that part hard-coded. But right after that, I have the URL itself, and then below that, I have a metadata block with class and order. So this is one way we can generate XML. Of course, I could use an XML parser to do it in a more formal way. But for a simple demo, this works quite well. So this is going to generate my feed document, and it's going to store it in a variable. Now, you'll notice right up at the top, I do have a doc type declaration. Uh, it's very important that this be the first character in the file. If you have any empty space, the GSA will reject the file. So I've got that on the same line as the command that creates the variable in the first place to prevent empty spaces from being added. The next step of the process will actually send that document to the GSA. So I'm sending it by building an HTTP post. And I'm specifying the MIME type to be multi-part form-data. Uh, by default, when you send a form, it'll send it as application slash x dash www dash URL encoded. And while the GSA will accept that, that can cause problems if you're sending any significant amount of data. So Google recommends that you always submit your form using multi-part slash form-data. There are three parameters that we're sending as form fields, the data source and feed type, which are going to reflect what's in the XML. If you specify different values here than what you have in the XML, it will still work, but the GSA will use the values from the form instead of the ones from the XML, and that'll be a little confusing.
the field that contains the actual XML is named data. So those are the three fields that we have to send to the GSA. Now the remainder of my simple program just displays a response to the user. In real life, a user might not run this interactively. You might have it scheduled to run, so this code wouldn't be necessary. At the beginning, I've got some code to actually show me the XML that I built, and that's really there just so that we can see it. And then I'll get the response from the GSA, which will be stored in the variable file content in the CFHTTP object that comes back after I make a CFHTTP request in Cold Fusion. So again, this is going to send data to that URL and then bring back a response. Now again, as we've seen, the documents in question do not have any metadata. So we looked at Bobcat. It doesn't contain metadata. If I look at the rest of them, they also don't contain metadata. So now I'm ready to run my program. It's called Build Metadata Feed. So I'll go ahead and load that page in my browser. And at the top, I can see the actual structure of the XML that was generated. And then at the bottom, I can see I got one word back from the GSA, success. So now I can go back to my feeds page on the GSA. And here's my feed in progress. And I can see it contains four documents. So that's a good sign. At this point, I simply have to wait for that operation to complete. After waiting a while, I can refresh my feeds page, scroll down, and for my feed, I should see completed eventually. Some other options I have here, uh, I do have the ability to download the XML that was submitted to the GSA, which might be useful for reference. But this will only be there if the XML was well formed in the first place. So my program should have some mechanism to save a copy of the file locally as well for diagnostic purposes. Now after the content appears in the feeds page, I can go to Index Diagnostics, and I should be able to see my results there as well. Now the GSA had already crawled all four of these files, so it doesn't need to go out and recrawl them, but now it should have metadata associated with each one. So if I go to each file and scroll down, each one now has class and order metadata. and I can verify this for all four files if I like. Now this metadata does not necessarily replace other metadata. It'll simply add to that metadata. So you'll notice that we have an entity value country that came in. That came in from entity recognition. If there were any metadata directly embedded within the pages, that would show up here as well. So our metadata feed simply adds additional metadata rather than overwriting metadata. If you want to use ACLs, you'll need to have a way to identify each user's group membership. You've already learned about several ways this can be done at serve time. LDAP authentication, cookie cracking, and the SharePoint and AD Groups connectors. But you can also preload group membership onto the GSA using the Policy ACL API. This also accepts XML files that contain groups and their members, which can be other groups or individual users. This concludes our eighth presentation, Writing a Feed. Thank you for watching, and make sure to watch the other GSA 200 presentations.